This is creating an end-to-end -end database driven Blazor application. First, I have a book, An Introduction to Building Applications with Blazor, available on Amazon and at blazorhelpwebsite.com. I'm Michael Washington. The application that we're going to build today will allow you to log in and create weather forecasts. It will allow you to create a new forecast by entering the Celsius, Fahrenheit, and a summary. And when you click Save, it will actually save to the database. In addition, you'll be able to click the Edit button, and you'll be able to edit the forecast, which will, of course, update the database. And finally, you'll be able to delete the forecast. We'll start off with Visual Studio 2019 Preview or Higher and we'll say create a new project and we'll create a Blazor server-side project. On the template it will allow you to change the authentication and you'll select individual user accounts and store user accounts in app. You'll go ahead and then click the create button. The application will be created in Visual Studio and it will open up. You'll then be able to go to view SQL Server Object Explorer and add a new database. In this case, we'll add a new database called end to end When we look in the properties for the database, we can select connection string and copy the connection string. We'll then go to the app settings JSON file and we'll go to the default connection property and we'll paste the connection string. At this point, we can then start the application by hitting F5 and it will open up in the web browser. When we click Register, we can create a new account. However, the database hasn't been created yet, and a page will come up to ask us to apply migration. We will then apply the migrations and refresh the web browser. At this point, the application has been created, and if we go to the counter page, we can click the button and we will see that it works. When we go to the Fetch Data page, we see that while there's data there, it is actually not real data, it is actually just fake data. Let's take a look at this in Visual Studio. We'll create a new application, we'll create a Blazor application, and we'll call it End to End. In the wizard, we have the option to change the authentication to use individual user accounts. We'll select the option to store the user accounts in the application. When we click the Create button, the Visual Studio application will be created. From the View menu, we'll select the SQL Server Object Explorer so that we can create our database. We'll right-click and say Add New Database. We'll call this database End to End. Now that we've created the database, we need to get the connection string. So we'll go into Properties and we'll scroll down to the connection string and we will copy it. We will then take this connection string and we will put it in the app settings JSON file so that the application will know where the database is. We'll put it at the default connection key. Now we'll save the app settings JSON file and at this point we can run the application. When we run the application, it will start up. However, at this point, there is no database. The database will be created when we click the Register button and we create an account. At this point, the application will realize the database has not been set up and the Migrations page will come up. We'll click the button to apply the migrations and we'll refresh the web browser. We'll then click the Continue button and now the application is fully set up. We can go into our profile and we can see that everything now works, including the password change screen. We can click end to end so that we can return back to the application and we can click the counter button. We will now create the database. When we look at the SQL Server Explorer, we see that database tables have been created when we applied the migrations. At this point, we will add a new table, and we'll add a new table called Weather Forecast. We'll click the Update Database button, 
and click refresh and we'll see that the database table has been added. If we right click on the table and select view data, an editor will come up and it will allow us to put in data. We'll go ahead and put in a couple of records so that we can have something to see once we add the code that will display the new records. We will then download EF Core Power Tools from the Visual Studio Marketplace. After we install it, when we right click on the project node, we will see that EF Core Power Tools will show up in the menu. We'll select EF Core Power Tools and Reverse Engineer. We'll then be able to create a database connection, click OK, and it will show us the tables in our database. We will then select the weather forecast table and click OK. The Generate EF Core model will come up and it will allow us to indicate the specifications that we want for our data context. The data context will be created. We will then go into the startup file and we will add a line to allow us to connect to the database. We will also change the weather forecast service from being a singleton to being scoped. We will then rebuild the solution. Everything should build fine. Let's take a look at this in Visual Studio. So we will first go to our end-to-end -end database and we will see that the tables have been added by the migration script. We will try to add a new table and if you get an error message, this sometimes happens, all we have to do is right click on the database and click refresh. At this point we should be able to right click on the database and add a new table and the table designer will show up. At this point we want to create a new table to hold our weather forecast so we will paste in a SQL script and click the update button. This will prepare and we click update again and now the table has been created. If we click refresh we will see that a weather forecast table has been added. At this point, we want to add some data to the weather forecast table. So we select view data, the data editor comes up and we can add some data. The reason why we're doing this is the next step is to read from the database. So we want to have some data in the database so that we can see that our code is working. We have installed the EF Core Power Tools so it shows up in our menu and we can select it and our connection and then select the weather forecast table. At this point the editor will come up and ask us for specifics for the data context code that we're creating. So we will go ahead and fill this in and click the OK button and then C Sharp code will be created. This code will sit between the code that we will write on our UI and the database. We also need to go to the startup file and add code to allow our data context to connect to the database using the default connection string. In addition, we will change the weather forecast server service from being a singleton to being scoped. We will now read from the database. We will open the weather forecast service file and we will add a method that will allow us to add new weather forecast by calling the data context code that we created earlier. We will then open the fetch data razor page and we will add UI markup that will display the table of weather forecast. Notice that we call the authorized view control so that it will only show if the person is logged in. In the on initialize async method, we will call the get forecast async method, passing in the current user, and it will return the forecast for that user. When we run the application and go to the fetch data page, we see that it will not display anything if we're not signed in. We can then log in and when we go to the fetch data page, it will then display the weather forecast. Let's take a look at this in Visual Studio. We'll first delete the weather forecast class file because we want to use the one from our data context.
We'll then open up the weather forecast service and replace the code with code that actually reads from the database. We'll open up fetch data razor page and we will place all the code in it with again code that will actually call our new code that's in our data context and actually read data from the database. Now when we run the application and we go to the fetch data page we see that it will not display anything unless we're logged in. Once we do log in by entering the username and password that we created earlier We can then go to the fetch data page and we will see the data. We will now cover inserting data into the database. We will open up the weather forecast service file and we will add a method called create forecast which will simply take a weather forecast object and insert it into the database. We will then return to the fetch data razor page and we will add a button that will open up a pop-up that will allow us to enter a new weather forecast. It will call the add new forecast method. We will then add the markup code that will show the pop-up. Notice how it's wrapped in if show pop-up and this pop-up will allow the user to insert a new forecast. Notice there's also a button to close the pop-up. In our code section, we will have a show pop-up boolean to track whether or not the pop-up is displayed. We will also have a method that will close the pop-up. The add new forecast method will first new up a new forecast, set the ID to zero. This way we will later know that this is a new forecast in the save method. And we will set show pop-up to true, which will cause the pop-up to show. When the save button is clicked, the save forecast method will run. At this point, we'll create a new forecast and then call the create forecast async method to actually save the forecast. When we run the application and click add new forecast, the pop-up will show. We can then enter a new forecast and click the save button. At this point, the forecast will be saved to the database. Let's look at this in Visual Studio. We'll go into the weather forecast service and we will add a new method that will create a new weather forecast when passed a weather forecast object. Next, we will go to the fetch data razor page and below our table, we will add a new button that will allow us to create a new weather forecast. We're adding a button that when clicked, we'll call the add new forecast method. However, we will first add a pop-up. This pop-up will show and that will allow us to actually have a screen for the user to enter the new forecast. We will have a forecast weather forecast object to track the existing forecast being edited and we will add a add new forecast method that will actually open up the pop-up. We will then have a save forecast method that will actually save the forecast. When we run the application and log in and select fetch data and click the add forecast button, the pop-up will show and we can enter a new forecast and save it. Now let's look at updating data in the database. We return to the weather forecast service file and we add a new method called update forecast async, which will take a weather forecast object, retrieve it from the database, update its properties, and then save the updated record to the database. We then return to the fetch data razor page and we update the table to add a edit button. This edit button will call the edit forecast method, which will take the weather forecast record that's on the current row and set the currently edited forecast object. It will then open up the pop-up which will then display that record so that the user can update the properties. When the user hits save, the existing save forecast method will be called. However, in this case, we simply add one line to the update section which will call the update forecast method to update the record. Now when we run the application, we see that there's an edit button next to each row. 
when we click that edit button, that record will show up in the pop-up and we can edit the properties and click save. We will then see that the record has been updated in the database. Let's look at that in Visual Studio. We'll first open up the weather forecast service and add an update forecast method. We will then go to the fetch data razor page and we will select the existing table and replace it with a new table that simply contains a new column that contains an edit forecast button. When this button is pressed, it will call the edit forecast method, passing the current forecast on the row and open up the pop-up and pass that to the pop-up. This will allow the person to edit the forecast. When we run the application, we see that there's an edit button and when we click it, it will open up that forecast in the pop-up. This will allow us to edit it and click the save button. When we click the save button, the record will be updated. Finally, we will look at deleting data from the database. We return to the weather forecast service file and we add a new method called delete forecast async, which will take a weather forecast object, retrieve it from the database, and then remove it from the database. Returning to fetch data razor page, we add a delete forecast button to the pop-up. Notice this button is wrapped in an if statement, which detects whether or not the current forecast ID is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, the delete button will show. If it's not, the delete button will not show. The reason why we do this is we do not want the delete button to show if there is not an existing record. We then code the delete forecast method, which calls the delete forecast async method, which will actually delete the forecast from the database. When we run the application and click the edit button to show the pop-up, we now see that there is a delete button. If we click this delete button, the record will be deleted from the database. However, if we click the add new forecast button, we see that there is, the delete button will not show. Let's look at this in Visual Studio. Again, we go to the weather forecast service and we add a delete method, which will take an existing weather forecast and remove it from the database. We then go to the fetch data razor page and we scroll down to the pop-up section and below the existing add button, we will add a delete button. We then implement the delete method that will call our delete forecast method. When we run the application and log in and click on fetch data, we can then click on the edit button to pull up an existing forecast. When we click the delete button, it will be deleted. However, when we click the add button, the delete button will not show. Again, I have a book called An Introduction to Building Applications with Blazor, which is available on Amazon and at blazorhelpwebsite.com. There are a number of tutorials and you can download the files for this tutorial from blazorhelpwebsite.com. Thank you.